Welcome back. Moving forward, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the best practices that are followed or that should be followed when you're working with GitLab. I'm also going to compare Git and GitHub best practices or just practices rather. And then we're going to take a look at how GitLab adds value and benefit to Git and GitHub. So several organizations, enterprise-wide organizations, for instance, or any other company, ends up with a workflow, typically, that is not clearly defined. So that's one of the scenarios that even I've come across in my own experience. Overly complex, so either it's not defined or it's just way too complex, or not integrated with issue tracking systems. And that's key because they may have good workflows, they may be on paper very clearly defined, may not be overly complex, but the most important aspect that's typically missing or have really come across is the issue tracking systems within the same environment, right, within the same tool. So organizations coming to Git, for instance, from other version control systems, frequently find it difficult and hard to develop an effective workflow. Here's the Git basics on one hand and then the challenge on the other hand. We all are aware that simply by working with Git, we can have a working copy, we can index, do a local repo, remote repo, right? Git add, commit, and push. Straightforward. So here's the challenge. While working on all of these branches, right, the flow is top to bottom and from left to right or right to left. So everything is being intermingled when you're working with just standalone Git. So this flow typically would leave a lot of questions. And we're not talking about Git here, we're talking about GitHub, which came about and offered a solution to the challenge that we just talked about, right? So the solution to the intermingling of all of those branches from left to right, right to left, GitHub stepped out and then provided a solution. And the solution was fairly logical and good as well. And a lot of companies, in fact, use it. So they offered a master branch and then everything being added to that branch. So all code changes are then merged into the master branch, which again makes sense. And it, you know, most companies or organizations use this. And this flow leaves a lot of questions unanswered regarding deployments, environments, releases, and integrations with issues. So, for instance, which environment are we working on? Is master a single environment, whether it's production, whether it's staging, whether it's QA, and so on. So GitHub, even though, gave a simpler alternative, but it still lacked that particular one piece of element that in fact GitLab flow provided. And let's take a look at what that is next. So the three environments here are production on the left, the middle one is the environment, and then the release branches with GitLab flow. So for instance, starting from the first, which is the production on the left side of the screen, you notice there's a master branch and there's a production branch. So code is being deployed from master to production. Within the environment area, you'll have master, pre-production, and production. So you can have several branches, QA, pre-production, post-production, and so on. Similarly, everything is being deployed from the master, deployed on staging, to pre-production, and then to production. And then with the release branch, deployed on staging, which is the centerpiece, the master, right? And then you can deploy in pieces. You can do maybe one or two or three stable deployments. And then you can even select which part of the code you want to deploy for the application. And then which are not stable and so on. So this is a perfect environment which has a logical flow. And especially when you're working with Kubernetes, right? You're tying GitLab with Kubernetes engine. It works perfectly well. The other advantage that we have with the GitLab flow, and again, as a best practice, that's what you, we would like to do, is the fact that we have an 
issue tracking system built in, right? So the merge requires the pull push. So it's all integrated. And with auto DevOps, everything is automated. So now we can have one consistent environment across the board, no matter how many development teams or developers you have working on this particular piece of software or application. So lastly, what is a key takeaway, right? Of course, the key takeaway is the fact that we have a seamless environment end-to-end -end where we can start with the code, we can plan, we can measure, operate, and then of course, build, test, release, and deploy all within the ambit of Kubernetes working with GitLab. So I hope this helps. Just wanted to highlight a few best practices with GitLab that we can actually follow and implement to come up with the consistent solution and processes. With this, let's move to the next lesson.